What's up guys, welcome to Southern Hike. I'm Taylor and today we're talking about my loadout for the Timberline Trail. Rachel had a loadout too, it was very similar to mine, just had a few less things, but we'll just go ahead and strictly talk about my pack today, my base weight, what exactly I brought, what I should have brought, what I forgot, and what worked and what didn't. Honestly, on this trip, everything went really smooth. Uh, all the gear we had worked perfectly. We didn't waste like bringing extra gear. There was a few things I wish I would have brought and definitely done a couple of things a little different, so we'll talk about in this video. I wanna mention that before, when I had all our food for the four days i'll link that video above we'll talk about the full loadout i have for my food and two water two smart water bottles one full liter and then the one that's like 0.7 liters or something like that i think that has the squeeze top on it um i've already tossed both of those they were beat up pretty bad but i weighed it with both of those full and then had my full bear bag full of food and it was at right at i think it was right under 27 pounds today let's go ahead and weigh it with base weight without food and water and just see how much weight we're dealing with my base weight was 16.1 pounds I'll go ahead and start from the outside and work my way in and then basically talk about everything we used and why i brought it and the things that were not necessarily used but could have been used first thing was is i brought a single trekking pole because I, you've seen the videos already i filmed this trip so i wasn't going to bring two trekking poles this is highly recommend i don't know if i said in the video a very good trail trekking poles just because of the train and the incline and decline it would very much help to have to i wish i could have used to but i was carrying my camera so i did bring one trekking pole for the water crossings and it definitely came handy I had maps. I had one of the best maps recommended for the Timberline Trail. I used my Gaia uh, app for the most part, but I had this backup paper map. I always believe in having a good paper map. And then I had a detour in here too for the part of the trail that had the blow down. I didn't end up using this at all, to be honest. The, the app did pretty well, but I wanted to have this as a backup. Rain jacket. I kept it old school. It's kind of heavy. This is an old Columbia rain jacket I have. It's worked pretty well. It fits in the front of my pack easy. I carried it too. Hillenox Zero, or yeah, Chair Zero. You know, this is a one pound chair, awesome. We used it every night. It was a super good addition to use. And then the sun just comes out, sorry about that. And uh, we both used our chairs, brought that also. And I, bought a, I brought a buff also. I did not end up using it. It was pretty warm out there. And then it was just no reason to have it so, or use it. So my other uh, Patagonia Capilene hoodie worked pretty well at covering my neck and stuff. I was just trying to worry about the sun and stuff, but I brought it anyways just in case I needed it. This is an Outdoor Vitals buff. All right, so that's the front of my pack. I brought my GSR mug, used it every morning, did perfect. I brought my Topes pot. I did, I will say I did take the big lighter out of here. That, that's such a minuscule weight. I'm not gonna really worry about it but this is a 550 milliliter pot, worked great with the MSR Pocket Rocket 2, worked great too. So these two together, man, we use these for multiple meals. And one more thing to list, I was gonna make sure to list these things through this video. I did not have my butane stove. We got rid of it with through hikers when we were there in Oregon. That would also be considered part of your base weight. Then I had the Be Free filter. We be <laughs> We filtered a lot of water when we were on trail, probably 40 to 50 liters, maybe not that many, maybe 20 to 30 liters. Definitely come very handy. As everybody knows, this filter filters water very fast, so it makes it very convenient to use, and it did great. There's not a lot of dirty water there besides where the rivers are, and there's a lot of like silk in there, so I avoided those places just not to clog up the filter, but definitely worked perfect for this trip. I will say that we did, just because I'm a nervous nanny about that kind of stuff. Rachel did carry our Sawyer too in her pack just in case, but we never ended up using it. I did bring the Sawyer. Uh, this is their, let's see, can't, I can't never say that word. Hurridin, Picardian uh, spray. We did spray everything down with the, the Sawyer spray on all our packing gear too, but I used this just to spray on our body. We didn't run into any mosquitoes or anything. They were kind of gone and then no ticks or anything like that. But as you've seen in the video, black bugs like destroyed us on the second day. All right, so I got both of those main pockets, these sides. I carried snacks in this pocket. And then I had some white. I wear contacts, so I had to bring these with me to make sure my hands were clean before I stuck my fingers in my eyes. So I always kept those with us. And then, let's see. Ended up using some of the TP, not all of it. We used that Rachel's, but had some TP there. Hand sanitizer. And then my headlamp. This is the uh, Nightcore 25. I only used it on one night. We didn't have fires, so we were already in bed every time before it got dark, and then my Swiss Army knife. I did not use this knife the entire trip, to be honest with you, but it was with me just in case. All right, so that's my front pockets. Let's see. 
then had the uh, chicken tramper water bottle holder this is their smaller one for the like 0.7 liter smart water bottle did awesome i'm going to talk about these in another video and also use their other like cell phone or small pocket my phone my iphone x or 10 slipped in here easy and then i also was able to keep you know other odds and ends here if i needed or stuff like that or an extra snack there so these on the outdoor vitals pack were awesome it's really hard to find stuff that fits on here the justin bottle water holders that you can get on etsy do not work with this pack just because because you cannot take this part apart. That is one of the downsides of this pack. Unless you cut this end off of here, you can't unassemble this so you can put that actual water bottle holder on there. So this chicken tramper just used the clips like you've seen on some others and they did. Talk about clothes real quick before we get into the bag. So I had the Patagonia uh, Capilene hoodie, I had the Patagonia Nine Trail shorts, I had All Trails uh, 5.0 uh, Lone Peaks, did awesome, and then I had the uh, Darn Tough sock, wool socks, they did both did awesome, especially Crossing Creeks. This is one of the one things I want to talk about. I forgot our gators and we paid for it. Our shoes got covered in sand and like I just cleaned out all the sand out of our shoes. It was awful. Really this trail everybody we crossed had them on. We should have had our gators with us and that was my mistake. I forgot them and we paid for it definitely. So if you're doing this trail make sure to bring gators. I don't know if you're into them or not but they definitely help in this situation for keeping the sand out of your shoes. Alright bear bag. So I used the large bear bag as you've seen in that other video and then I had my totes spoon in here. And then it's the long spoon, and then I had our, our rope for hanging our bag. I did it because there's a lot of critters we seen out there, especially chickmunk, mice, stuff like that. So I just wanted to keep our stuff up off the ground. The final nights we didn't have a good place for hang, so we truly put it inside of our tent. I mean, that was just the situation we were in. So as you can hear, there is a pack liner in here. I used one because a lot of the crossings were super deep. I talked about in the video, and the bottom of my pack got wet a couple times because we were in water up to our waist. So we never ran into rain. Oregon's really in a bit in a drought right now so we didn't have to really worry about rain but it was important that if I dropped down into the water my stuff wouldn't get instantly soaked. So Outdoor Vitals this is their puffy or I think their adventure jacket it is a synthetic did awesome we only needed it on the SC second and third night it did cool off pretty good first night it was pretty hot so it didn't need it which it was unusually hot to note for Oregon. Now let's talk about camera gear so I had my Canon EOS R I had two extra batteries and then three total one included inside three SD cards one for each day and then I I had the Hilltop Packs fanny pack to kind of keep everything in together. I had their cool, good battery, bad battery. This little thing is awesome to know which battery is good and which is not. And then I had the, I'm forgetting the name of this thing right now, the uh, Petco, their pod, I think it's called something like that. I'll link it, I'll put it on the screen. I can't remember the exact name of it. This worked pretty well. Didn't really use as much as I thought I would, but it was better than carrying the Gorilla Pod, which is kind of aggravating to use sometimes. And I brought this specifically because when we were crossing some of the water crossings, my camera is very expensive and it took a long time to get to this camera, so I don't want to ruin it in the water. So I would wrap it up and every time we would cross those crossings, just put my camera up and this would seal it up. That way, if I got my pack submerged, it would have to get through some barriers before it actually leaked into wet in my camera. Even though it is semi-waterproof, it's more just water resistant. All right, ditty bag. So there's a couple things I already took out of here but I can list those. This is the first aid kit, a few little extra odds and ends I keep in there too. My contact stuff, the only thing I don't have in here I think is my glasses and then my battery pack. Now that's for base weight, just thought they probably need to add like a half pound for that too. I have the larger 20,000 milliampere battery. So it probably, it's pretty good weight on there. I'll put that weight on the screen too, just to make sure I know that. But then a bug net, never used, could have used. There was a lot of people with them, but just never pulled it out. As long as you kept moving, the black flies didn't mess with you too bad. Earplugs, and then I had a bottle of Advil because it's the best thing out there getting any serious pain. So also there was toothpaste. I had a toothbrush, but we buy those cheap toothbrushes and we just chunk them when we're done. So I already threw that away. So that's everything in my duty bag. All right, had the Nemo Dagger 2P. This is a great tent. It's been awesome for us. I still gotta actually open this up and clean all the dirt off of it. It collected a lot of dirt on trail, but it was really good. It's got a really big vestibule on each side, so me and Rachel will enjoy it. And it can be freestanding, so that's a big advantage to it from somewhere where we can't use stakes. So there's our one set of poles. Then our stakes here. Trekology pillow, y'all have seen in many of my videos that I praise this pillow. It come in clutch again, never had an issue. It works well, it doesn't slip bad, and it was just the perfect pillow again. So, I had stuff sat with my Revelation 30 degree uh, wide quilt. Worked well, 
It was definitely warm the first night. I actually slept with no cover for most of the night. Then the morning when it cooled off, I pulled this up over me. And both the other nights, even though it was cooler, I was kind of fighting with it. But I would take it off, put it on, take it off, put it on, because it was just kind of a little too warm for that. But I kind of rather have too warm than not warm enough. So I've, I just don't have a quilt that's rated for a higher temperature than this. Honestly, in a trip like this, it would help to have one like that though, or the 40 or 50 degree really didn't need this much coverage as far as keeping warm. All right, I think last thing in here is my, yeah, my Nemo Tensor. Y'all know I love this pad. Uh, this is an awesome pad. It still works very well, worked great on this trip, had no issues with these both of ours, and it's just an awesome pad to use. So guys, I think, I think that's everything. And also, I wanna mention I had an extra pair of underwear, an extra pair of uh, darn tough socks. The socks definitely use them after a couple days because ours had gotten so dirty and waterlogged from the crossings that, uh, yeah, they were nasty. So guys, I think that's my whole setup. Like I said, I talked about the gaiters were one of the things I wish we'd have brought. I also wish we'd have brought camp shoes. So every night our feet were soaked. And unless we wanted to walk barefoot, we had to keep those on, and as everybody knows, you know, you want your feet to get dry and circulate well after you've done over 10 miles on the trail each day, so it would have been great to have camp shoes, so I basically just had to have find a rock to prop my feet up to be able to breathe and just not be able to sit around and do stuff with them, but be able to get my feet out and air out and still be able to get them dry, basically, so definitely would have helped have camp shoes to be able to maneuver around and not have to worry about wearing my ultras and stuff like that. That's everything. If you have any questions about this video or comments, or if you're doing this trail and I'm curious about gear we use, let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear. And uh, this has been, a, it was an awesome trip as you see in the videos and we really enjoyed it. I was really proud of how this gear turned out. This whole selection did really well. There's nothing I really complain about. There's a couple things that would have changed, but that's it. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it. I really hope you did and it really supports the channel and we will see you next week.